I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here, blessed to be with Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan of Idaho. And we have the important topic, a very crucial topic to, to discuss regarding anti-Semitism. So I know, Lieutenant Governor, uh, that you recently contacted the governor, Brad Little, regarding the issue of anti-Semitism. And uh, so that was a very bold step. Uh, a congressman in, in, the, in New York and, and uh, many in the Congress are speaking out on this issue mm -hmm. regarding the uh, Palestinian state or Palestine issue. Mm -hmm. But what was your comment, or what were your, um, your thoughts shared with Governor Little on the matter of anti-Semitism? Well, first of all, Dr. Harper, let me thank you for your events, for your efforts. You're always at the White House, our White House correspondent, the one that we follow and track back here in Idaho. And I appreciate you being involved and engaged in that way and you're constantly sending me videos and messages and prayer requests and so thank you for your effort to keep help keep the citizens of idaho well informed about what's going on at our nation's capital and on this issue it's so critical that we as a nation a christian nation do support the nation of israel that's what we're called to do so and so it's so important that we do that, and it's alarming what we see happening from the current Biden administration and some members of Congress, especially as compared to the way President Trump, our 45th president, was dealing with the issue. He was very supportive of the nation of Israel, worked hard and diligently to build up the, the relationship with that country he issued an executive order back in 2019 which prohibited any anti-semitic activity on our colleges and university campuses mm -hmm. that is so critical that we we protect the freedom of speech freedom of religion and make sure that our government is not facilitating some of those those sentiments that we that are causing concern to a lot of us today. So thank you for your efforts. Um, I was, con Jordan, we were contacted in my office from the American-Israeli Coalition, mm -hmm. and they wrote a letter asking, because they, they were alarmed about, a uh, notification went out about a company that was participating in the uh, boycott, the boycott, a divestment, divest, divestiture mm -hmm. sen sentiment. And there was, they were alerted that there might be a, con a company that was contracting with the state of Idaho in these activities, which last year, well, last legislative session, which was earlier this year, the legislature passed a law through that prohibited the state from contracting with any of these companies that was signed by the governor and so when we received the letter from this coalition we we wrote a letter to the governor asking him a series of questions actually there were four questions that we posed to the governor and s s part of it is specific to the language but there were other things that had happened in Idaho that were concerning in December of 2020 the Anne Frank Memorial had been vandalized with swastiki stickers, which left a stain on Idaho and the reputation of our state. And so the comments that were made by the mayor of Boise, the governor of the state of Idaho, that saying that this is not tolerated in our state and that the perpetrators would be held accountable. Also, we know that the police, the Boise Police Department had surveillance cameras around the memorial and so it's really important that when people say things when they make comments about holding perpetrators accountable for their actions it's important that we follow up with that and so that was the first question that we posed to the governor is that uh, as a CEO of the state did you follow follow up on this investigation and were these per perpetrators held accountable the people of Idaho deserve to know what happened in this incident. On, on that question, we have not received a response back from the governor on that question. 
Well, that he hasn't responded to my request about giving a statement on anti-Semitism. Uh, I did read the, the letter in response to you about this matter, about that opposing all forms of anti-Semitism, but not really being more specific. You were very good at make, making it more specific about what anti-Semitism is. Yes, yes, and, and, uh, so. and thank you for your efforts with the governor's office, and that, that was also one of the other questions that we asked of the governor is that you had made repeated efforts to reach out to his office and get a response back from his office and that was one of our other questions do you, of whether or not he res intends to respond to your request and issue a, a statement against anti-semitism so you're telling me as of today you still have not heard back from I, I haven't heard back the governor okay well uh, that's unfortunate because he needs to respond to his constituents on these important issues. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in this state that share the belief and the sentiment that we do. In fact, the churches that I, I just came back from visiting up in North Idaho, we visited eight northern counties up there, and I attended two church services where both the churches have on display, they have an American flag on one side and then they have the flag of Israel on the other side mm -hmm. with a cross in the center. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, there's a lot of people in I, our state that share the, the beliefs and the sentiment that we do that it's really important that we fight back against this movement and any anti-Semitic activity in our state. Well, like I said, I was really pleased about you know, more of a descriptive you know, statement in describing anti-Semitism. Uh, mentioned me earlier about how how alarming it is that there's a lot of people that accept a Palestinian state idea uh, and uh, It's great to have some uh, this New York congressman and other congressmen uh, Congress people that speak out to say there is no Palestine mm -hmm. what I've found it in, in my research so far and, it, and that is it relates to the history of the Roman Emperor Hadrian that he called this area Palestine and it, it just seems like it just fuels this anti-Semitism as long as they believe that Israel's the occupier. Yeah, so yeah. Um, uh, what, do you, what would you like to, to say about this, this whole issue of the Palestinian state and people denying Israel the right to their, all their land? Well, the, the, there's been conflict in that part of the world for since, since, the, since the early days. We know that. Mm -hmm. But when these people, I mean, and we go back to you know, ancient biblical times, and we know that the people of Israel, God's chosen people, had roots in that part of the world. And then, and then there were, yes, there were conflicts, but there were agreements, and, and, and when there are conflicts and there are resolutions about how to solve the conflict, then it's our responsibility to abide by those terms of, of agreement. And that is, uh, we know, again, going back to biblical times, the people of God were there, that was their homeland. And, and uh, just because one group of people doesn't wanna recognize that or recognize an agreement doesn't make it any less real. I know this seems to be growing. And I've, you know, in my experience at the White House, witnessed a lot of anti-Semitism amongst the media, and even in the White House, their you know, the conversation with Iran and all these these actions are really forms of anti-Semitism. Of course, as you know, President Biden is what uh, seems to be obsessed with dividing Israel right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I, to me, it's important that I am on the right side of God, <laughs> and mm -hmm. and I know that He is there and that the nation of Israel, they are God's chosen people and he has the plan and his will will be fulfilled, his plan will be fulfilled and it's my, my job is to be on the right side of, of God. I think that goes along with what we've talked about before. It's that prophet Joel, uh, it talks about uh, God's anger towards people that divide up Israel mm -hmm. and this whole Palestinian state is dividing mm -hmm. Israel. So um, for those of you out there that have not uh, you know, read Joel 3.2, 
It says, for God interest in a judgment in the valley of Jehoshaphat, the nations that divide up in his, up his land. And of course, judgment is not a good thing to have God entering into judgment against you for dividing up his land. And uh, so hopefully uh, more people in leadership will understand uh, what's at risk here for Israel. That's, of course, that's my hope. And it has to be all of our prayer because that is the only resolution on this very difficult situation that we have in the world. The conflict in the Middle East is, can only be solved by our, our Father in Heaven with His perfect plan. Yes, and we sure need, we sure need uh, God's involvement with this. It's very, very troubling times. And I, I want also to, 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 to <coughs> comment about, it was great to have, you know, as I mentioned, your detailed uh, description about anti-Semitism. And for those that have been concerned about that cemetery, it's oh, been yes. desecrated. Uh, in Vilnius, Lithuania, uh, it was great to hear, uh, hear you speak up about that, and hopefully the White House will as well. Um, yes. it, it's, it's so alarming that, and for those that haven't heard about this, that Jewish cemetery in Vilnius, Lithuania, there's a website, savevilna.org, but uh, I know we, we've been talking about that for, while, for yeah. quite a while. And, uh, well, I mean, I don't know why anybody thinks that's okay, is to mess with a hallowed graveyard. Um, you're just asking for trouble if you want to mess mess with that. Also important is that we still have a lot of work to be done. In fact, I think I had a conversation, a, a, a conference call just this morning with two individuals from this organization. There is more work to be done in the state of Idaho where we need to have stronger definitions in our code about mm -hmm. anti-Semitism because without good definitions of terms and it's it makes the law our laws more vague and hard mm -hmm. to enforce so so we're, we're looking at that we're gonna look at what we need to do to strengthen the definitions in our code and then the mm -hmm. other thing that we're looking at that we need to look at in our state is that even though, and the governor did respond affirmatively that this company, Unilever, is not currently contracting with the state of Idaho to provide services according to the law. What we do not know yet, though, is whether or not any of the state, the, uh, the Percy Retirement Program, or any of the investments of the state are have money invested in that company. So that's the next step that we're going to take to find find the answers to the to that question there so with that so there's yes there's still work to be done and we'll pursue in that direction keep praying and I know that God's listening to our prayers he's opening our eyes people are waking up to what's going on may not like everything that we see but that's part of the first step towards making changes and I want to thank you for my special pen here and for the extra one that you gave me. And I'll make sure it get, goes to the right home. Thank um, you for all that you do, Dr. Harper. Appreciate well, and continue to keep us time. posted and informed of when you're back in DC. God bless you, you, you you're great. You, you provide a great service. It's not to easy to be in. there, as, as you know, right? <laughs> no. And I yeah. wanna let you know what that, that pin is that uh, Lieutenant Governor is referring to is the Israeli US flag pin, very special pin of our uh, relationship with Israel. So thank yep. you once again. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you. We read news every day. News that's informative, but rarely encouraging. The Intermountain Christian newspaper aims to change that. They present the news you need to know, from what's going on in your community to your world, with encouraging words, motivation, and the resources you need to make positive changes in your life. What is your local government doing that you need to know about? What's happening in your community you need to be a part of? Whether it's a story from your neighborhood, a national story, or an encouraging word, you'll find biblical issues of everyday life in the Intermountain Christian newspaper. Intermountain Christian News is produced and supported by the work and donations of individuals and churches. You'll find it at churches, Christian bookstores, by subscription, and online at imcnews.org. To find out more about supporting this local resource, go online at imcnews.org or call Intermountain Christian News in Boise, Idaho at 208-703-8688. The Intermountain Christian News, a voice sharing the truth on matters dear to people's hearts.